Hello everybody, how are you? Um, so we're going to talk about sciatica today. It's a common thing that comes up in my yoga classes. People come to me and they say, oh my god, I think I have sciatica. Can you help me? And I say, I believe I can, actually. Um, but I think it's important to understand exactly what sciatica is and um, how you know how serious is it in your body if you have it etc and it's under it's it's i think it's important to understand um well like i said what it is so hello 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 glad you're here um so sciatica is a symptom um of a problem that you're having with your sciatic nerve okay so when people say, oh, I think my sciatica is acting up, right? Sciatica is not an actual part of your body. The sciatic nerve is. So when somebody says that, it, what it means is that they're feeling um, a symptom of a problem that they're having with their sciatic nerve. Hello, hello, hello. So, if you've ever felt this, then you know what I'm talking about, okay? We have, <clears throat> there's complicated stuff going on in the body, in the pelvic region with that area. So we're gonna go over exactly kind of what's happening in there and then we're gonna go over some stretches and massages that we can do to help decide really whether or not it is sciatic or if it's something else, okay? so. The first thing to know is that it is, you have a sciatic nerve, okay? Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, it's not coming from my head. This is coming from medical places, okay? So this is from integrityspineortho.com and I'm gonna put all this stuff underneath the video as well. Um, the longest nerve in the human body that's what sciatic is. The sciatic nerve, not sciatica. Sciatic nerve is the longest nerve in the human body. It begins in the low back and then it branches off down both hips, buttocks, legs, and feet. Okay? So that's your, that is your sciatic nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body. Pretty cool. It provides movement to the muscles of the lower legs, including the calves, ankles, and behind the knees. Okay, um, it also provides sensation to the back of thighs, lower legs, ankles, and soles of feet. So it's not sciatica, like I said, it's not technically a condition, okay? It's a symptom of something else that's happening. Um, for 90% of people who have, that's not right. For ways that you can have sciatica, in that condition or that that symptom um, is herniated discs okay um, but a lot of the time um, a lot of the time when people come to see me and they say oh my god I think I have sciatica issues it's your piriformis okay so we're gonna get into that yeah herniated discs is gonna be the number one thing really that that causes that sciatic issue but piriformis syndrome is something that we're going to talk about and that's the most common thing that I see as a yoga teacher. So when people come to me and they say they, you know, they're limping or they feel something in that area of the body, um, they say their instinct is, you know, because this is like a, it's a common thing that we hear. Or you might even go to your doctor and they say, oh, it sounds like you have sciatica. Well, the problem with that is you have to determine, it has to be determined where that is coming from, and then you can treat it. Um, so here's how, if you have a herniated disc, um, that's where 90% of sciatica issues are gonna come from, is from a herniated disc, um, but other, potential causes are spinal stenosis, which is narrowing of the spinal cord, 
um, spinal bone spurs, degenerative arthritis, spinal tumors, nerve damage from diabetes, increased pressure on the spine during pregnancy, which I definitely had that. Um, so when you have that feeling of sciatic, sciatica, right? You say to yourself, oh my God, I think I have sciatica. What that actually is, it's a symptom that occurs when the sciatic nerve in the lumbar spine becomes compressed or pinched in some way. Now, the interesting thing about it, you know, for what I was saying with the, with the piriformis, um, we have this little muscle that lives in the glutes, right? And it attaches from the sacral area of the spine. So the, the portion of the spine at the bottom that's all fused together. It attaches from that to the top of your leg, the, t the head of your, your femur here, your, the trochant, the greater trochanter. So the top of your long thigh bone is attached to this little muscle. It runs from there to your spine, okay? So for 80, I just wanna get this right, 80%, 80% of people, okay, of the population, the sciatic nerve will go, will travel, so this is the piriformis right here, the sciatic nerve will go below that, it'll go under it, but for 17% of people, isn't it amazing? I know, um, for 17% of people, that sciatic nerve is going to run through the piriformis. Now the piriformis, if that gets tight, right, if that gets tight from being overused, that's going to squeeze the nerve, right? Or if the nerve is running underneath it, it's going to affect the nerve there, right? For, but for a lot of people, it's, it's going to run through it and that's going to squeeze it. And now you're getting that nerve um, pinching sensation where you might feel reactions down the legs, numbness, um, tingling sensations, or any kind of pinching pain that you might feel. But there's ways to determine whether or not it's a herniated disc or piriformis, okay? So we need to talk about that because it's really important. Because if you have a herniated disc, there's things, different things that we need to be doing for the body. But there's going to be a lot of similar things if you have piriformis syndrome, like I just talked about with the nerve going through uh, for a lot of people. Now, I have to say, in yoga, I see that the most. I see the piriformis syndrome the most. Um, do people have herniated discs? 100%, of course, yes. Um, but if you have a herniated disc, like I said a second ago, um, you know, it's from different things, um, getting older or um, some kind of ways, some damage from diabetes or, you know, other things that have happened in your, in your body. Um, so there are, now I got this from my good friend who is a physiotherapist in England. His name is Simon and he did a video and I'm gonna put the link below this, but he also has, um, yes, yeah, Sasha, I know. Um, he also has an Instagram page on here. It's Simon, I'm sorry, it's Hogan and Mitchell Physiotherapy. So on YouTube, they do, they've done a bunch of different videos. And one of the videos is how to determine five ways that you can use to determine whether you have a herniated disc. Um, and these are the five things. Okay. Again, I'm going to link the video in the comments after this video. And I'm also going to, when it goes onto the YouTube channel, Carry Yoga, I'll link them there too. So here's some ways. If you have pain, okay, when you're, yeah, Simon, Simon, when you're bending the body forward, okay, when you're bending the body forward in a, in a rounded position, if you feel pain when that's happening, then you might have a herniated disc. Okay. Why is that? Because you're pinching the front of your, um, your disc that's in between the vertebrae and it's causing pressure at the back of the disc that's bulging at the back. Okay. So you're adding pressure to that area. If you think like a, a balloon is about to pop, right? So think of that as your disc in the center of your vertebra, vertebrae, vertebra. Um, if you're pinching it at the front because you're bending forward, right? Now you have this balloon 
kind of happening at the back where all that pressure is going to, and that's gonna add sensation um, to the sciatic and, and give it, you know, make it feel like it's pinching or hurting, okay? Um, when you're lying on the floor, if you're lifting a leg up, yes, 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 you have to stretch. Um, if you're lying flat on the floor and you lift your leg up and you have trouble lifting the leg up or if it causes you pain, if you're lying here and you can't, you know, if you lift your leg and you can't get higher than out here without causing pain, then that's, that could be a sign that you have herniated disc. Coughing and sneezing, if you do either of those and it causes pain in that low area of the back or down the legs, again, it could be a herniated disc. Um, when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you get out of bed, first thing you do, um, and you feel pain right away, that can also be a sign that you have a herniated disc. Because when you sleep at night, when you decompress your spine, right, you take the pressure off of your spine, um, it's going to give the discs between the vertebrae time to repair, really, okay? So we want as much fluid in those discs as possible when we decompress and we allow the space between the vertebrae, it's going to allow the discs to get that fluid that they need, that they want, okay? So that's going to give us a healthier disc between the vertebrae when you're lying down at night. So when you first wake up in the morning, if you feel pain right away, without even doing anything yet, you might have a herniated disc, okay? So that's another way. Um, and then the other one is just really if you have pain or tingling or numbness down one of your legs, that's a sign too that you might have a herniated disc. But keep in mind what we said before, it could be piriformis syndrome, which like I said, it's mostly what I see in my classes. You know, when people walk in, they say, oh, I think I have sciatica. Well, actually, you might have that from piriformis syndrome. So yes, the answer is you could have sciatica, but it's either from herniated discs or it's from piriformis syndrome, okay? Could it be both of those? Sure, why not? Uh, but hopefully not. Hopefully it's the piriformis syndrome, in my opinion. Um, I'd rather have that than a herniated disc. Um, so, okay. Let's talk about the piriformis. Like I said, it's the muscle located from those low discs and attaches to the upper leg. Pier, yes, piriformis, piriformis, P-I-R-I, piriformis. Um, it's a small muscle, okay? It attaches to your, the sacrum from there and then to the top of your leg, okay? So if I'm standing, I'll show you. Here's my, here's my back here. So here's my sacrum. I have a little muscle here. It's going th from my sacrum area down, and it's attaching right here to the head of my, my trochanter here. Tiny little muscle. And in Latin, in Latin, it means pear-shaped. So it really is a small pear-shaped muscle, and it's flat, it's flat. So it might be a little muscle, but it does a lot of good stuff for us in helping us to rotate the leg open and closed and helping us to walk, okay? To lift one leg to walk uh, place in front of the other. Um, so it's an important muscle, but it's a little devil. You know what I mean? So how do we get that? How do we get piriformis syndrome? It's very simple, from overuse. Pear-shaped, pear-shaped, yep. Um, so if we overuse that muscle, we might feel that. So how do we overuse it? Climbing stairs, um, long walks, running, um, sitting. If you're sitting for a long time, woo, okay? So these are all things that are gonna, it's actually overusing that area of your glutes in the butt, that little muscle, all right? So what we want to do is do some stretching. We're going to go over some things, but I want to show you too, a couple of massages as well. Now, this is a great way to figure out. Yes, it's good. It's good. But you have to stretch and you have to massage if you're feeling that, that tightness in the buttocks. 
Now, the thing, one thing that I really love to do when, I, when I'm teaching yoga is help people find their piriformis. It's very exciting for me. So I'm gonna show you how to do this on your own. I have a tennis ball and I also have a rolled up towel. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I also have a men's tie because I left my yoga tie in the studio. So I'm gonna use a men's tie. Do not tell my husband, because it's his. And then we have our massage roller. Woo, okay. So there's different ways that you can find your piriformis. Way number one, when your hand goes onto your butt cheek right here, okay? And you push down into this butt cheek, butt cheek area, all right? If you feel a tenderness there, if you feel a tenderness, then you might have a type piriformis. Now, what I'm gonna add to this little message is that most people that I know feel tenderness in their piriformis, okay? And that's not a bad thing because it means it's a muscle that you're actually using. It's good, you wanna use it, okay? But you don't want it to be lying dormant, right? You wanna actually use it, but take care of it by exercising, using the muscles around it as well to help support it, okay? So we wanna build up those muscles, which why you know, which is why when you're sitting a lot, it's gonna affect it, right? Because you're not, it's just lying there, it's just hanging out, it's doing nothing, right? So it's gonna make it tight. Whenever you, you don't stretch muscles out, right? They start to shrink, right? And then they cause pain and discomfort in the body. So we need to stretch and move. Okay, so here is a tennis ball. I don't know if my head's gonna get cut off, but we'll see. So I'm gonna move my towel to one side. I'm gonna take my tennis ball. Now, if you have a tight piriformis, you're gonna feel this, okay? So you just lay down. Take your tennis ball and put it right underneath your bottom and just kind of roll from side to side with your bottom. And it is so painful, right? But what I'm gonna say is it feels great. It's like a deep tissue massage. So you're just kind of rolling from side to side. I'm going from the center of my bottom out to the side and back. I'm not going across the middle of the bottom, okay? So I'm at the top of the bottom there, just at the base of my spine, and I'm just kind of rolling across the top of one butt cheek. I'm rolling, and I'm gonna do the other side. So you can actually feel which one is tighter, too, if you go from one side to the other. Now, a tennis ball is sort of, um, a, a tamer version of what you can use, but if you really want to go deeper with a massage, you can use a lacrosse ball. But to me, that's a bit torturous, so I'd rather not. Thank you very much. Okay, so the other option, and I do this in yoga classes a lot, is to take, and I just shot a video that's coming out next week that has that's full of this, these exercises. Um, so just take your towel, and you're gonna roll that up nice and tight. And this is a similar type of situation. It's gonna go right across. I'm gonna lay down and I want the rolled up blanket to go across, I'm trying to get my head in there, across the top of my butt crack, all right? We're talking technical terms here, all right? My knees are bent. My feet are gonna open a little bit wider and I'm just gonna sway my knees one way and then the other. One way and then the other. And this is massaging all across the top of my, my glutes, which is where I wanna be, okay? Now, if you don't feel a lot of sensation when you're doing this, just make little adjustments and see if it helps. So you're just going side to side, little massage, okay? All right, so that's, oh girl, it is so good. All right, so that's something. Now, if you do feel a tenderness on one side more than the other, when your knees drop to that side, if you feel that, stay there. Stay there. Breathe, okay? Like 10 breaths, okay? Try 10 breaths. 
and then maybe go the other side as well. Okay. Here is a massage roller. Oh my gosh. Now listen, this has been in my son's bedroom. I do not know what he's been doing with it because it's filthy. I don't even want to know. All right, so I'm going to take my massage roller. And if I have a tight piriformis, this is going to be heaven. And when I say heaven, I mean in Tortureville, okay? So I'm going to sit on my massage roller. My massage roller is right, if I roll forward and back here, what I want to feel is a place in my bottom that I can be settled. Okay, so we have sits bones, okay? Those are the bones at the base of your pelvis that you sit on. You literally sit on those, right? Those are called sits bones. So if I'm rolling forward and back, I can kind of feel where the roller gets to the sits bone, and then I'm gonna roll away from that. So I roll, find the sits bone, and then roll away from that. Find a place that feels like I can hang out, and I'm gonna cross an ankle. I'm gonna do this way. Cross an ankle over the other knee, and then lean a little bit to so if my right ankle is crossed over my left knee, I'm gonna roll a little bit over to the right, and then I'm gonna roll forward and back. Now, if you have a tight piriformis, this is gonna feel amazing. And when I say amazing, I mean painful. <laughs> so just rock forward and back, and this is gonna help massage that piriformis, that tight piriformis, okay? So a part of the treatment that we're looking for with these kinds of things is a little bit of massage and a little bit of stretching, or maybe a lot of both, depending on where you're at today. So here we are again, we're rolling forward and back. I'm tilted a little bit to my right side because it's my right ankle crossed over. And I'm gonna hang out where I feel the most tenderness. And I'm just gonna breathe into that. <sighs> Try to relax. Try to relax, deep breathing, and then maybe switch to the other side. Now, for you and your body, you might have one side tighter than the other. For most of us, we do. But it's nice to give some treatment to both sides because why not? And you might discover something on one side that you weren't feeling without getting this massage until you actually do it. And then you think, oh, I didn't know that was there. I didn't know I had tenderness in that spot. So I'm tilting a little bit to my left. I'm rolling forward and back to help massage that piriformis. I'm breathing. And I'm going to find the most tender spot. Now for this side for me, it's just above my pelvic bone, the sits bone there. And I'm just going to add a little bit more pressure to that. I'm going to breathe really deeply and try to relax using my breath. Good. So that's your massage roller. Now we did something similar a moment ago with the tennis ball and with a towel, rolled up towel. So those are some options for you. As far as stretching goes, here's some things that you can do. And I highly recommend doing these things. We had, I had somebody come to me the other day and she said she had sciatica and I gave her a couple of stretches. I said, do these every single day and see how you feel, okay? Um, so she did, and the very next day she felt better. So please try these out. You're gonna feel better, especially if you have this tightness in the piriformis, okay? So one thing that you can do, it's so simple, so simple. Bring your legs up the wall, get your butt as close as you can to the wall, okay? So you wanna hug it into the wall, and when you lift your legs up, that's how close you are, okay? This alone is gonna help stretch the muscles at the backs of the legs and into your glutes, all right? So if you stay like this, again, 10 deep breaths, this is gonna be amazing for you to do. Amazing, okay? This is a great stretch. If you have a doorway that you can put one leg up the wall and the other leg straight down the floor, that's gonna be even better, 
delicious, okay? Because that's gonna help straight, uh, stretch the whole back of the leg up the wall and the other leg will be down on the floor, okay? So that's one thing. Now, another thing against the wall I'm gonna show you is dead pigeon, all right? I like to do this against the wall. I'm moving away from the wall now a little bit, about a foot away. My feet go on the wall. This is a good thing to do on the wall because you don't have to do anything with your arms. You can totally relax. So bring your left ankle above the right knee and that's it. That's it, okay? Now, staying again, 10 deep breaths. You can get your hips a little bit closer to the wall as an option, okay? If you wanna feel a little bit more, the closer the hips, the more stretch this is gonna be in your left hip, all right? Now, once you do one side, try doing the other side as well. And again, 10 deep breaths. Try to relax as much as possible. Good, so that's your dead pigeon. Now that can be done on the wall. That can also be done on the floor without the wall. It's just gonna you take some hand and arm strength, not really too much strength, but leverage, okay? So if I have one ankle over the knee and then I hug the right knee in. Good, so it's the same thing without the wall now. If you use the wall, it's probably gonna help you relax even more and you'll be able to relax and open up that piriformis. Men's tie, <clears throat> okay? If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a men's tie. Again, do not tell my husband because this is his. So you're gonna take your right foot inside the strap and you're gonna bring your leg straight up the, towards the ceiling. Now, this is exactly what I was saying to do if you have a doorway, okay, that you can do this in with your legs. One's gonna go up the wall and the other leg lengthens down to the ground, okay? Relax your shoulders, take a deep breath. The more you can relax, the better. Good, now open your leg out to the right and hold the strap up towards the foot. My foot is all the way in the camera, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so you wanna open out we're just trying to open up the whole hamstring area into the hips and into the piriformis. So here we are, we're opening out. And if you visualize the piriformis, that little muscle in, in the glutes there that we talked about, right now what it's doing is it's, it's slacking a little bit, okay? So that's not bad either. That's not bad, it's a nice thing to give it a little bit of a break. Now let's lift up and we're gonna roll the body Hold the strap with your left hand now and roll your body over to the left hip, okay? So now I'm rolling over. My hip, is, my right hip is stacked on my left hip and my right arm can come out behind me, okay? So this is a really amazing stretch for that whole right leg and up into the back body, okay? And again, you're gonna hold these stretches for as many breaths as it feels comfortable. 10 would be a great amount. Five is good too. In and out is one breath. Just try and let everything go. Good. And then the leg comes back up to center. Okay. Shift your hips to center. Take a deep breath in. Relax your shoulders. And breathe as you pull the leg closer towards the face. All right, so that's one leg. You can do both if you want. We're not gonna do that right now, but feel free to add the other one into your little schedule as well. And I think, I think I went over everything that I wanted to go over with you. So if you missed any of this, you can catch the recording. Um, <laughs> Sasha, <laughs> you're so funny. Um, you can catch the recording. You can also catch several of the videos that we've done on the YouTube channel, Carry Yoga, to help you. Go do them. They're going to help you, okay? Um, and um, this is going to, you can catch this replay for this video, just a half hour video that we did today. And it's going to be right here on Instagram, or you can find it on YouTube as well.
in just a few moments when I upload it. All right, so have a great rest of the day. If you have any of these issues going on in your body, um, try all of these things. Um, first, determine whether or not you think you might have a herniated disc if you do have issues. Um, and if not, then it's probably your piriformis, which all these stretches that we just did are going to help. Um, there are some, so with Hogan and Mitchell, like I was talking about the physiotherapist in England, um, he also does a video on his YouTube channel. I will put the link below in the comments um, on exercises to do if you have a herniated disc. Okay, so really good information um, from all these different areas um, and just, you know, keep breathing, keep breathing. If it's hurting when you're stretching, deep breaths, girl, deep breaths, work it out. Don't go so far into it, okay? A little bit at a time. I hope you have a great day. If you have any comments or questions, let me know and definitely share the video if there's somebody out there that's suffering that this can help because we're trying to help people. Have a great, great day. Thanks for being here. Namaste.